Friend, we're in that hour. There's people you would never thought would depart. There, there's people you'd never thought would walk away. That's why I'm telling you, son, if you live in loose when it comes to following God, you better tighten up. You better straighten up. You better get yourself serious. You better stop putting so many gaps between you and God. Somebody say it's the gap God. In Psalms 106, it talks about Baal Pior. This was a false god, a deity, Baal, part of Baal. Amen. Worship and, and, and it was demonic. It was satanic. Amen. And they would worship Baal PR. They would sacrifice their children and the devils. Uh, modernly, they just called it abortion. Abortion Satanism. Biblically, that's why abortion is still Satanism. Amen. And so, you know, you, you'd see them. They would worship Baal PR. Someone say Baal PR. Baal, you know, would refer to Baal, and they would say that would be God, amen, and PR literally means the gap. Some ought to say the God of the gap. And this is not a capital G, this is lowercase g. Some ought to say the gap God. Oh, there's a lot of people, praise God, they got too many gaps. They got too many places between them and the Lord. They got too many openings. Come on, somebody. They're, they're, they're not following God close. Luke 22, the Bible said in the word of the Lord, I believe it's around verse 54, that Peter followed him afar off, maybe around verse 58. Somebody say he followed him far off. Uh, amen. Praise God. There's a lot of people that claim I'm following him and it don't mean they're not, but they got a gap between them and God. Come on, somebody. What did Peter do? He sat down around a man-made fire. Hallelujah. He started denying Christ and eventually he denied that he was even a Galilean, that he was even one of them. Then he starts cursing. Uh, amen. The old man starts coming back up. Somebody say when you start denying Christ, you'll deny his church. You'll deny his people. You'll stop gathering with his people. When you've denied him, you'll deny them. Anybody hear the Holy Ghost? It all came about because he was following Jesus, but he was doing it far off. Somebody shout, you better close the gap while you can. Hear this warning from this preacher tonight. If I ever not, if I don't ever get to preach again, you better hear this warning tonight. Close the gap. I'm seeing so many sheep. They got so many gaps. Amen. They're leaving so many doors open. Oh, don't you know it don't take a big opening for a snake to get in. Give not place. Come on, somebody, to the devil. Neither give place to the devil. Ephesians 4, 27. Somebody shout, oh, a serpent needs is a little crevice, a little opening, smallest of opening, a little gap, just a little gap. Amen. Praise God. Listen, Song of Solomon 2. The Bible said in verse 15, take us the little foxes that spoil the vine. Take us means catch them. Somebody say it's time to go on a fox hunt. Hallelujah. Catch the little ones. A lot of people's looking for a big lion. They're looking for a big bear, so to speak. They're looking for something big. Hey Amen. And to decide whether or not the enemy's moving in. But somebody shout, this big lion always moves in first as a little fox. Hey Amen. A lot of people are petting the little foxes. Come on, somebody. They're taking times off from his house. Taking times away. Hey Amen. From gathering with the saints. Taking a little time, a little break from prayer. Amen. Whatever it is, they're using the oldest excuses in the book. Like Luke 14 says, they're using their occupation, they're using their job, and they're using their family. That's the oldest excuses in the book. I'm not going to re-preach that, but the outline is there. It's nothing new in the hour we live. And they got these little foxes, these little gaps. They got these little excuses. Come on, that's going to turn into a vast valley. And they're going to be so far away from God and not even realize it until the trumpet sounds and be left behind. Anybody hear the Holy Ghost? Somebody shout out tonight. You better get in the spirit. You better straighten up. You better straighten up. You better get things in order. You better close every door that needs to be closed. Amen. Glory to God. Close up every gap that needs to be closed. And you better get close to this God you profess faith in. Because I'm telling you, I'm warning you by the spirit of God. There's many going to be taken out just before before he comes. Why? Because they're playing around right now. They got gaps. They think I can still follow Jesus Oh, about this distance. No, you better get in the shadow. Somebody shout to be at a gap and to be at a distance. Amen. You can't be in the shadow. Some people's just watching him from a distance. Amen. But they're not in his shadow. To get in his shadow, you got to get close to him. Somebody shout, it's time to get back to the shadow of the Almighty. You got to get in the shade hallelujah there's so much double mindedness double tongue 
double standards, no stability, no steadiness, no predictability in the sheep. You don't know what they're going to do. It's according to what's happening in them whether you can determine what they're going to do. Hello? They got gaps in their life. Many gaps. Somebody say gaped open. Gaps. Gulfs, so to speak. So much distance between them and God. Hallelujah. Don't mean they're not following him, but they're doing it from a distance. They're doing it from afar off. And it don't take much. Come on, somebody. To cause them to sit down, not at the fire of God, but out around a man-made fire. Anything that sounds good, feels good, and it's all approaching God. Amen. Is what God's going to do for me. And they call it a move of God. They've called it revival. They call it everything in the world. Uh, come on, anybody hear the Holy Spirit? They'll sit down around any man-made thing. Oh, praise God. Why? Because they'll take a substitute because it don't cost nothing to get the substitute fire. It don't cost you having to pray. It don't cost you having to fast. It don't have to cost you nothing. It don't have to cost you your time. It don't have to cost you your sleep. Oh, anybody hear the Holy Ghost? It don't have to cost you your convenience. You can get it for pretty much a nothing. All you got to do is shout for it. Come on, anybody. All you got to have somebody do is prophesy over you for it. Oh, glory to God. Anybody hear the All you got to do is go to a concert and hear a song for it. Anybody hear the Holy Spirit? I'm not talking about that cheap stuff. I'm talking about something you got to pay a price for. I'm talking about something, amen, where you walk in the Spirit so close with God. Hallelujah. There's no room for compromise. There's no room for doubt. There's no room for second guessing. Hey, you ain't guessing whether or not you're going to obey God. You ain't guessing whether or not you're going to go to church. You making plans. You you ain't guessing. I don't guess when it comes about God. Hallelujah. I make my plans in the spirit. Paul said in Acts 19 and 21 he said I have purposed in the spirit. That means I make my plans in the Holy Ghost when there is distance between the sheep and the shepherd. They guess. You can ask them something about God well right there. There's the gap. Come up here, I won't use you. Come on up here, I won't abuse you. They got gaps between them and God. You know, you stay right there. See all that area? Ask me if I'm going to church. Well, you know, you know, I, I'm not sure yet. Well, you know, I'm so busy, not too busy not to be on my phone, though. But I, if, if I can get some time, I'll be able to open the door in a minute. That's what they're doing, brother. Nick. Well, now, I'm in the spirit. Ask me. Wouldn't think of doing nothing else. Well, ask me again. Amen. Yeah, done did. Going to pray? Oh, hallelujah. Mm. You understand what I'm talking about? You see? Thank you, girl. Hallelujah. People got all that room. That's why they can't just answer you. That's why they don't ever know. Well, look, at, let me see if I can look at my calendar. I didn't get up last Monday morning after two services on Sunday. Look, now I don't know what other preachers do. But I don't take naps on Sunday. I don't, I don't rest. I'm up way before daylight. I go and I sometimes midnight before I get to the house. Hello? I take this serious. Amen? I'm not up here playing. If I was up here playing, I'd be trying to entertain people to make people like me more. You know? Uh -uh. I work at it. You got to work at it. Don't work unless you work at it. Amen? You got to stir it. That's what it means. And uh, so, you know, but when I woke up Monday morning, I weren't, I never thought whether or not come Thursday I was going to go back. Hello? Now I've been to a doctor appointment and I've sit in an emergency room for five or six hours since then. Hello? I, this morning, it took me, I don't know, I don't know, I, I don't know what was going on with me. 
I can't even describe it. And, and all the doctors can say, everything's perfect about you. I thought, you ought to ask some people on social media. <laughs> you know? No matter what they test me, it comes back excellent. Hello? I don't know what was attacking me today. Thank you for praying for me that day, bro. Yeah. I was, uh, <laughs> I was sitting there about 2.30 this afternoon. Not because I wanted to be sitting, because usually I'm done here. And, uh, and now, now, yesterday, I, I, I worked here for hours, but I don't know what it was today, man. I could not hardly go. It's like something had grabbed a hold of my body. And the thought went through my mind about 2.30. I even looked at Brianna. You remember, I said, you got to work tonight. Because there was a thought going through my mind. You ain't preaching tonight. You're going to have to have somebody else to do this. That thought, I thought about it twice. And it tried to hit me the third time I got up. Come on, anybody here, Holy Ghost? Some I'll see in the spirit. In the spirit, they, they, they ain't no gaps. They ain't all that much room. Hallelujah. Lynn told me, she said, well, you could have stayed home. I said, not me. Hmm. What if I start doing that? Hello? Amen? Anybody here, Holy Ghost? And I know people sees us on social media. People, people sees you up here moving, dancing, and singing and preaching and they think my god i wish i had their life they must not never have a problem they must not never go through nothing they must not never have anything attack them no we still go to doctors we go through sicknesses we go through loss we go through death we go through struggles we go through everything everybody else does plus on top of it's laid us the ministry come on somebody hey man and you have to fight through and press through and you have to keep doing what god calls you to do no matter how you feel no matter how it looks anybody hear the holy spirit I'm talking about living in the spirit. I'm talking about being in the spirit. It don't mean, amen, that you don't have no problems hit you in the flesh. Amen, the flesh is weak, but somebody say the spirit indeed is willing, Matthew 26, 13. And if you ever yield to the spirit of God, no matter what's happening against your flesh, no matter what's going on, and I'm not telling you, amen, that there's not times that come, and I pray they don't come, and they, I can count a few times that it has happened, amen, where it took me away from the pulpit. Hallelujah, but I'm telling you by the spirit of God, there's not that much room. There's not that much gap. Hallelujah. Well, Brother Marvin, uh, hey man, ain't the life of a minister kind of easy, just kind of uh, slow going, just, uh, you know, tiptoeing through the tulips, got so much time on your hand, you don't know what to do. I'll go ahead and tell you, I ain't got time to get bored. Me or none in my house. Anybody hear the Holy Spirit? Oh, we don't just do this. This is what people see us doing. Hey man, and they think, my God, look how many times you see them doing, you see them, hey man, but some Somebody shout, it's by the Spirit. Hallelujah. Marvin ain't no match for nothing. Amen. My house ain't no match for anything. We go through some of the same things, but the only difference is we can't have that much room between us and God to be able to opt out every time. Amen. An excuse arises, and some of them are real legitimate ones. Amen. But somebody shout, when you in the Spirit, and you rubbing elbows with Jesus, come on, somebody, and there's no this is between you and him. It ain't wondering if I'm going to do it. It's if I die doing it, I'll just die. Because I'm going. I'm doing what is said to do. And then when you start doing, the Holy Ghost comes on you. And you find out what you couldn't do, you never could do anyhow without him. Hallelujah.